WT distribution. As you remember, I unzipped an archive, a zip file in my case for Windows, into the C drive. And regardless of what your distribution looks like for your particular operating system, um, the contents are going to be more or less the same. So there are some tools here that are going to help us create GWT modules. For example, the application creator. This is a nice tool, and I always use it when I start to create a GWT module. It basically creates a skeleton of a GWT module, some of the necessary directories that it would expect to have, some of the necessary files, a, con a b default configuration file. And then what I'm able to do is just go inside these files and make the changes I need to customize my particular GWT module. So we'll see this in action in just a little bit, but that's the tool that we'll use to start building our GWT module. There's also a companion tool, Project Creator. And Project Creator is used to um, build project files for Eclipse and for Ant. So if you're going to use either Eclipse or Ant, this tool will help you get the necessary project files that you need. There's some other uh, different files in here now, but those are the two that I want you to focus on for right now. Uh, and also note that there's two other directories. The doc folder, this is going to contain all of our documentation, Java docs for the APIs, and samples. So let's open up samples. This is a really great way to learn how to use GWT. What you're going to see are example modules, example widgets, uh, and you'll also be able to take a look at the code that was used to generate these. So let's just take a look at an example and let's open up the mail folder. You'll see two tools here, mail compile, mail shell. When you use application creator to create your own module, you'll also get these two, these two tools as well. The compiler does just what you think it would. It takes your Java code and turns it into JavaScript. And the shell we'll take a look at in just a second. The shell is uh, going to allow us to test um, our application. Some other directories here, www. If I was to create a web application that didn't have anything on the server, that wasn't going to be doing any sort of RPC type callback, and it was just client-side HTML, JavaScript, and cascading style sheets, well then everything I need after I run the compile tool will be in that www folder. In fact, I could take the contents of that folder, drop it in any HTTP server, and it will run uh, perfectly. Let's take a look at this particular example, the mail application. And the way to run this application is I double click on the shell. Now, the first thing that popped up was the background shell. And the second window that popped up is the hosted browser. So we'll jump right back to the hosted browser in a second. This is our, our shell. And from here, we can look at log messages that may be um, displayed. In just a second, I will show you the different types of arguments we can add um, to specify what type of log messages we need. But right now, just keep in mind that any sort of logging that would happen as we are testing our application will be displayed here. The top section will have a single line uh, summary of what that log message is. And then on the bottom, we'll see more details of that log message message. So the second window that popped open was our hosted browser. Basically, the hosted browser is being uh, run by GWT through a light version of Tomcat. So the browser opens up. In fact, I'm going to make this just a little bit bigger, a lot bigger. And it looks like a mail application. Everything that you see here was built through GWT widgets. So if I click on a particular uh, letter, you'll see that the bottom is changing. On the left side, I've got different folders that I can click on. I have uh, a menu down here that says Tasks and Contacts. I can click on that and get that particular menu to show up. So just a nice way to see some of the capabilities of GWT. Another thing to take a note of is this Compile Browse button. What's happening right now 
is although we are running our GWT module, it's not actually running JavaScript. It's running Java bytecode. And what this will enable us to do, for example, is to put breakpoints in our IDE, such as Eclipse, and run our uh, module using the hosted shell and browser, and hit the breakpoints and do some debugging. And we can do this because what we're dealing with right here is Java bytecode. But let's say I really want to test it in uh, a real browser. And so I want to look at the JavaScript and take a look at what's going on. I can click on this Compile Browse button, and it will take just a little bit to uh, run. It's going to take all of our Java code, translate it into JavaScript, create all the necessary files. And once that's done, a web browser, whatever is our default, will pop up. Here it comes. And now we're actually looking at that same mail application inside of, in this case, Firefox and it really is running uh, JavaScript. Each of the tools in the GWT distribution typically have some arguments that you can pass into it that will help customize how these tools behave. Now I'm not going to go over every tool and every argument for each tool that you can use, but I want to give you a general feel for what the different applications have. And then if you want to look up specific arguments for a specific tool, you can find that information at the GWT website. They have a reference documentation for each of these tools. So for example, with the application creator, remember this is the tool that's going to create the skeleton of our GWT module. You can do things like minus Eclipse and tell it the project name, and that'll create a debug launch for your particular project inside of Eclipse. If you wanted to specify a different directory than the um, default directory for the output, you can specify a minus out argument. Our hosted browser also has arguments, things like minus port if you want to change the port number for your Tomcat server. If you remember, the shell had um, some logging that we were able to see, so you can set what the log level is, minus log level. Uh, the log level follows, like a lot of logging tools, different um, levels of detail. So you can say whether you just want error messages, or do you want debug messages, and warn messages, and info messages, things like that. So you can specify the um, most uh, verbose level of logging that you want. Some other um, arguments. The compiler has some. We'll take a look at the compiler in just a minute. Uh, you can, again, specify logging, but what does, we'll take a look at that's particularly interesting is the minus style. When GWT takes your Java code and compiles it and creates the, uh, the JavaScript files for you, the script can look in three different ways. It can be obfuscated, meaning that it's not very easily read by human beings, or you can change it to either pretty or detailed. And that will allow you or someone else to be able to look at those JavaScript files and more or less have an idea of what's going on. Now that we have a basic understanding of some of the tools that are inside of the GWT distribution and knowing that there are arguments that we can pass into them to help customize, let's begin by creating our own GWT module. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is obviously decide what I'm making. In this demonstration, we'll make a really 